Songs of old is a phrase we use without much thought, except for the dates. Yet many of these songs hold the history of a people. They echo from memories, from pain, from fleeting joys, from broken dreams and dark valleys, but somehow they culminate in hope, hope that floats on deep lifelong lessons, lessons that still hold the people to this day. For this month, we will explore the songs that are known as Negro spirituals as we join the reflection and celebration of Black History Month. I pray that the lessons that have outlasted time, politics, and ideologies will inspire us to keep trusting our God. Let us pray. Our holy, timeless God, the one who has walked with generations through struggles, brokenness, and kept their hope in you, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for all that you have preserved for and in us. Thou art our everlasting God, timeless and eternal, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, Thou hast brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. These words come from the poem turned hymn that was penned in 1900 by one of the leaders of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, James Weldon Johnson. The hymn calls for us to lift our voices and sing. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Somehow, these words seem to mimic the psalmist in Psalm 96 verses 1 to 2. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Psalm 137 was written about a people in captivity. And though the author is not named, it is clear that he or she was an exile taken forcibly from homeland. The historical context is that the Babylonians, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar, was given power by God to destroy Jerusalem in 586 BC. Now they were in Babylon, but their thoughts were on what was left behind and what had been lost. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Psalm 137 verse 1. Zion refers to Jerusalem and its temples, and the memory made them distressed. Verse 2 says we hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. They put away their musical instruments, an indication that they lost their joy. And when the captors asked them to sing some of the songs of Zion, the circumstances were just too strange for their songs. So they determined, we cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But that was not the resolve of those taken to the strange land of the Western world from Africa. All through the Americas, the songs still echo in the hills and in the valleys. Some of the songs were victory songs like the song of Moses and Miriam, which says, Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy, Exodus 15, verse 6. And others were songs of expectations, like Numbers 21, verse 17 to 18. Spring up, O well, sing to it, the well which the leaders sang, which the nobles of the people dug, with the scepter and with their staffs. The Israelites then used their songs to affirm the presence and the power of God in their lives. And so did the people, taken from their homes and sold as slaves. They would make and sing their songs in this strange land, and the songs became a rallying cry for action and a resolve to survive. 
The actual number of what we now call Negro spirituals is not known because slaves were not allowed to write. But one database records over 6,000 songs that were birthed in a slave period. And in these songs, nothing could take away their faith. According to Frederick Douglass, an American ex-slave who went on to become a powerful voice for liberation, the songs were tones loud, long, and deep. They breathed the prayer and complaint of souls boiling over with bitterest anguish. Every tone was a testimony against slavery and a prayer to God for deliverance from chains. Songs like, Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child, is interspersed with glory, hallelujah. While songs like Nobody Knows the Troubles I've Seen still echoes, glory, hallelujah, Lord, help me run this race. Lord, help me carry this load. The song ends, Nobody Knows but you know the trouble, the trouble I've seen. I'm singing glory, 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 hallelujah. Still songs end with an affirmation of praises to God. Singing their songs in a strange land was something they learned very well and every song spoke of their commitment to God. This was a spirit that took the slaves through slavery and their descendants through the Jim Crow era and continues to make sense of a strange land. A constant undying faith that God had not left them. While they openly wept like the psalmist in Psalm 137 verse 1, who lamented by the rivers of Babylon, in their weeping, they still sang. In their weeping, they still believed. In their weeping, they kept their faith. In their weeping, they still loved on their God. So whatever oppression you're facing, whatever strangeness has crept into your life, whatever you just cannot seem to be reconciled with and it is tugging at your faith and challenging your ability to sing your song, be encouraged. You can still sing your song. Know that God is expecting to hear your song. Psalm 89 verse 1 comes to us as a rallying cry. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness, O God, to all the generations. And today we stand to declare before everything that will come in our way, strange or familiar, joyful or saddening, whatever comes in our way, nothing can silence our song. Let us pray. Father God, we're asking you in this moment to let nothing silence us because all our songs are about you and your faithfulness. Our songs are of your mercy and your goodness, of your glory that is still seen in suffering and is still seen in joy and in brokenness and in wholeness. You reign forever, God. Hence, our songs cannot be silenced. And thus we say, Amen and Amen.